Okay, so I'm going to do a tutorial on cracking web with no connected clients. So there's no computers that are uh, associated and connected using the internet on that access point. Uh, I have a previous web video for cracking the password uh, with connected uh, clients. And, uh, and some of you are coming across uh, problems because there, there's no, co no computers connected. So as promised, I'm going to do uh, a video on that. Uh, I'm going to do... Um, the one out of the two attacks. I'm going to do the cork chop chop attack and the other one is the fragmentation attack. Uh, just a quick overview um, about the about the attack. Uh, the chop chop attack it, uh, it can decrypt a, a web data packet without knowing the key um, and it can work on dynamic web also. Um, this attack uh, however uh, doesn't recover the web key itself, um, as you'll see later on in the video. It uh, it just reveals a uh, plain text. Um, some apps are not vulnerable to this attack. Uh, they may seem vulnerable at first, but you'll notice that they may drop data packets that are uh, shorter than 60 bytes. Um, if the app drops the uh, the shorter shorter than 42 bytes, um, what AirPlay is going to do? It's going to try to guess the rest of the missing data as far as uh, the packet headers are predictable. Um, if it captures a, an IP uh, packet, uh, AirPlay checks if the, the checksum of the header is correct after guessing its missing part. Um, the, the only other thing uh, to do with this attack is that uh, it, it's going to require uh, at least one data packet uh, from the access point. So we're going to go ahead and, uh, and I'll walk you through the attack. So first off, we'll open up a terminal. Uh, you're going to need uh, to have Kali Linux up and running and uh, a wireless card that's capable of packet injection. So we're going to start off by putting our, our wireless card into monitor mode. Uh, we can view our, our, our interface with the command airmong-ng. As you can see here, my interface is WLAN 0. I have my chipset and my drivers. So we'll put this, this card into uh, to monitor mode, airmong-ng, start, and then our interface, so WLAN 0. If yours is different here, uh, say it's RA0 or, or whatnot, you'll have to substitute it just for this command, and then you should be able to follow along step for step as I go through the video. So we'll hit OK, we'll hit Enter. And uh, you may get this warning, uh, found three processes running that may cause problems. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to kill those processes and get rid of them just, uh, just so uh, they don't cause a problem down the road. They may or may not. Um, I've done attacks with leaving it on. Uh, and uh, I've, I've done it successfully. Sometimes I have to go back and, uh, and get rid of them. So we'll just do this so we don't have any problems. Alright, so now that our card is in monitor mode, as you can see here, we have our new interface, MON0. We'll go ahead and what that's going to allow us to do is to view the wireless traffic that's around us. So we can do that with a command called arrow dump. So arrow dump dash ng and then our interface, MON0. We'll hit enter. And as you can see here, uh, channels, it's going through the channels and, uh, and picking up all the routers on different channels. Uh, the elapsed time is just how long it's running and then we got the date. Uh, the BSSID is the MAC address of the router. Uh, your power is your signal strength. So the, the lower the number, the better the signal strength. The higher the number, the worse off you're going to be. Uh, just the beacons that the router is sending out. And then we have data, which we'll, uh, we'll be going after, after later. Um, this is how, how many uh, data packets are being sent out per second. Um, when you're reading about uh, Aircrack and AirPlay and AirPlay NG, um, the data packets they uh, they call them IVs or initialization vectors. Uh, same thing. Uh, we have the channel that the app is running on, uh, and then this is going to tell us what type it's running. Uh, BGN. We have our encryption, so WEP, WPA, the cipher, authentication, and then the ESSID which is the, the name of the access point. So we can go ahead and we can stop this with control C. And I'm gonna go after my other router called HackMe that I have set up for this. So we'll go ahead, we'll copy the MAC address 
and then we'll uh, we'll run a command so we can specify and capture data just coming from that access point. We'll do that with arrow dump again, dash ng, uh, dash c for the channel. As you can see, HackMe here is running on channel six. Uh, dash w, and uh, this is the name of the file that you want to write all your data to. So I'm just going to call it hack, and then the bss id. We'll paste that in since we copied it earlier, and then our interface mon0. Alright, so this is going to go ahead and this is pretty much just listening on this one access point. <clears throat> we have our, uh, our channel locked in on channel 6. Uh, you can see hack me, we have it wet, and, and, uh, and all that stuff. So we can go ahead and you can, uh, we'll start this attack with no clients. Uh, if you have clients uh, that are associated or connected to the access point, they're going to show up right here. You're going to see the BSSID of the MAC address, and then you're going to see the MAC address of the computer. So for this attack, we don't have any clients connected. So we're going to have to generate uh, our own data. And what we're going to do is we're going to create our own art packet that we can replay into the network, and then we'll have the data climb at a you know substantial rate rather than uh, what it's climbing at now. As you can see, it's uh, it's very very slow, and we're going to need roughly around thirty to forty thousand to uh, to crack the password. So what we're going to do is we're going to associate our computer with the access point. So we'll do a fake authentication, air replay dash ng one for the fake authentication. Uh, zero a and then the MAC address of the access point and our interface. So as you can see here, uh, we have fake authenticated, so the router thinks that we are connected to it. Um, from here, uh, we're going to look for uh, for a specified packet, and then uh, we're going to build it off the key stream. It's going to get saved into an XORG file. Uh, from there, we can build it into our own ARP packet and we can replay that into the into the network and get the data climbing as you can see here right now the data isn't climbing very fast at all and uh, so we're gonna get that climbing up because we need it around say 30,000, 40,000 to do it uh, I know my web is a uh, is 128 uh, bit encryption so we can go ahead and uh, we can run a command air replay dash ng dash 4 for the chop chop attack and then we're going to use dash b, uh, the access point's MAC address, dash h uh, for, our, uh, for our MAC address on the wireless card. So I'm going to go look that up here, if config mon0. And as you can see here, uh, under uh, beside hardware, it's going to show our, uh, our MAC address. It's the, uh, the first six octets, and then it just follows by 0000. zero, zero, zero. So we can put in our... Uh, our MAC address of our card. Zero, zero, C0, zero, CA, and then uh, 6C, 99DB. Nine, nine, and then we'll put in our, uh, our interface mon0. So this is going to go ahead and it's going to look for a packet um, and, uh, and then see if we want to use it. Uh, some reasons for for not choosing a packet uh, would be that if you're if you're looking for a packet length that was uh, if it was too short and you wanted or needed a, a PRGA that's uh, that's longer than the specific captured packet uh, you wouldn't use it. Um, also, if uh, if you were hoping to decrypt a packet from um, a specified client that uh, may be connected, if you're doing it against a client that is connected already on the access point. Or if, uh, if you want to purposely pick a shorter packet, um, a smaller packet, sorry. Uh, the reason being is that uh, the, the decryption time is linear. So uh, a smaller packet, it's going, to be, uh, it's going to be quicker. A bigger packet is, um, is going to, obviously, it's going to take a little bit longer. So um, often the, the app will drop frames um, if you don't specify... Uh, your MAC address as uh, it does not recognize the, the sending MAC address so that's why we use the dash uh, H option. Um, from here we can go as you can see the uh, we have a packet 
and we say yes we'll use this packet and it's going to go ahead and take the key stream and it's going to build as uh, an xorg uh, file so uh, this may go rather quickly it may go rather slowly uh, I'm just going to pause the video until it's a hundred percent done okay so as you can see here uh, my access point was uh, appearing to drop packets that were short shorter than 40 bytes uh, to establish a standard workaround with an IP header uh, recreation. So from here we can go ahead and uh, we can create our, our packet that we're going to play back into the into the network to uh, to get the data to climb. Uh, you can also see here that uh, it uh, completed in 279 seconds and then the, uh, the files that it saved to. Now, uh, if you know a little bit of what you're doing, you can uh, use TC TCP dump, and uh, you can look at the file, uh, the capture here, and um, in my uh, in my packet forge command, uh, you can actually use IP addresses. Um, I'm just going to use uh, broadcast, as uh, as you'll see shortly, and uh, this is the file that we're going to be uh, be using to create the art packet. So we'll go ahead and we'll use a uh, uh, packet forge uh, if I can spell here packet forge dash ng and uh, if we hit enter uh, we're going to use the uh, the zero option here for uh, for ARP uh, there's other options UDP uh, ICMP which is a ping packet uh, null and if you want to build custom so we'll go ahead uh, we'll use uh, packet forge ng zero for the uh, for the art packet uh, dash a. We're going to use the uh, the oh sorry dash um, dash a. We're going to use the uh, the access points MAC address and then uh, dash h. And we're going to go ahead and and use our ax our our um, uh, MAC address of our uh, our card. So I'm just going to do a, a quick scroll up here and, uh, oh, no, I don't have it, so I'll just have to uh, look that up once again. If config on zero, and uh, I'll put that back in. So zero, zero, uh, C, zero, C, A, uh, six, C, nine, nine, and D, B. Uh, from here, we're going to use a uh, dash K, and we're going to put in. Uh, this is where you could put in the uh, the IP addresses. I'm just going to use a broadcast. So if you know anything about networking, that's uh, 255.255.255.255. Uh, and then uh, dash L, and the same thing: 255, 255, 255, and uh, dash 255. So from here, uh, we're going to use the dash y, and we're going to um, use the uh, the file that it saved. So the the replay dot uh, so xorg there. So uh, replay uh, dot xorg, and uh, and then dash w, and that's going to be the whatever we want to name the the file that we're saving. I'm just going to name it as arp dot cap. And we'll go ahead and we'll create that. So as you can see, uh, wrote packet to arp.cap. And and now for the uh, for the juicy part, the the best part, we're gonna replay this packet into the network, and we're gonna get this data to climb that's currently at 1,010. So we can do that with the command air replay uh, dash ng uh, air replay dash ng. And as you can see here. Uh, dash two, which is uh, the inter uh, interactive uh, packet replay. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to, like I said, we're going to replay it into the the network. So dash two dash r for uh, the packet we want to replay, and then the name of the name of the file there. So we're going to edit and run that. Sorry, I forgot my interface once again. And now this is going to be the the packet. Do you want to do you want to use this packet? Obviously, we created it. As you can see, it's uh, it's a broadcast, so it's just going to be sent out, sent out, sent out, and it's going to generate us some uh, initialization vectors or or data, whatever you want to call it. So we'll go yes. We'll go to use this packet, and as you can see here, 
uh, we're injecting the packets, uh, 500 packets per second, and then you can notice that the data is uh, is now climbing at a, a much larger rate. So from here, we can open up another terminal and we can use aircrack. So aircrack-ng, and then the name of the file that uh, that uh, we saved it as uh, when we were using AeroDump. Uh, just just to do a quick ls and I'll show you the file that we saved it uh, if you remember back we saved it as uh, as hack so we're going to use this file here hack 01.cap so go ahead and uh, aircrack dash ng and uh, hack 01.cap um, if you also know the encryption you can use a dash n option and uh, and specify you know 128 256 or whatnot it's uh, it's not really needed so we can go ahead and hit enter here and it's going to take the data that uh, we're collecting and it's going to try to crack the web key and then from there on we can uh, we can start up our networking services that we killed at the previous so we didn't have any problems and then we can connect to the network so while the data is climbing to uh, to thirty thousand, I'm just gonna pause the video until we get there. Uh, you can leave this once you started, and it's automatically gonna start and check. As you see, it just hit fifteen hundred. It's gonna do that. If it doesn't get it at fifteen, it's gonna start again at at two thousand. Um, this is a much slower attack than uh, than some of the others. But uh, when you don't have clients connected, uh, you only have so many options. So like I said, I'll go ahead, I'll pause this, and I'll, uh, I'll come back when it's around uh, 30,000. Okay, so as you can see here, we're at, uh, at 40,000 now. Um, we can go ahead, uh, I stopped aircrack, I can go ahead and rerun it, and uh, see if we get the password. So as you can see here, we have the, uh, the password for the access point, and uh, we can now go ahead and uh, we can stop this, and we can stop our capture. Uh, I'll just go full screen again here. We can go ahead and we can stop this. Close this out. And uh, I have a file since I, I make uh, a few videos here off and on. Um, service config, which starts up all my, uh, my networking uh, services for me. Uh, really all you're going to have to type in is service networking start. Hit enter. And then service network dash manager start. And you're going to get that little computer back up in here. Uh, for me, it's just as quick as easy as, uh, as hitting enter and then everything starts up. If, uh, if you just want to copy this into a file, and uh, you, can, uh, you can run it yourself. So, Alright, now that we got the, uh, the little computer box up here, we can look for hack me. And uh, we can try to put in the key here. So uh, I tried copying it in here. Go paste, go show. All right, so it doesn't let me copy all of it in, so I'll have to put in uh, on some of it manually there. So we're just going to get rid of these colons as uh, they're not part of the password. They're just separating. Uh, and so we're going to end up at AC, so I need to put in 82, 49, DE, and then BF. And we're going to go ahead and click Connect. And then it's... Uh, it's going to try to connect to this access point for us. And as you can see, you're, uh, you're now connected to the wireless network HackMe. It's a little bit off the screen, but you can, you can get my drift. And as you can see here, we're connected. Um, I would show you browsing the internet, but it's, uh, it's just a spare access point that I don't have connected to the internet. It's just for uh, testing purposes. All right, well, uh, thank you. And uh, if you stay tuned, I'll make... Uh, Another video on the uh, the other option for for no connected clients uh, called the fragmentation attack.